The United States still does not want to allow Ukraine to use long-range weapons provided by the U.S. in the Kursk region, according to CNN. According to several officials, the reason is not the risk of escalation. The situation is that the U.S. has a limited supply of long-range ATACMS missiles to supply to Ukraine. In this regard, Washington believes that it is better to use them to continue attacks on Crimea, which was occupied by the Russian Federation. According to John Kirby, Strategic Communications Coordinator of the U.S. National Security Council, the Russians have redeployed some of their units fighting in Ukraine to the Kursk region. However, he did not specify the number of these units. We have seen some Russian units being redirected from operations in and around Ukraine to the Kursk area. I can't say with certainty how many or how many more may go or what their intentions would be, Kirby said. According to the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, Ukrainian forces have taken control of 82 settlements in the Kursk region. Since August the 6th, the armed forces of Ukraine have been conducting a special operation in the Kursk region of Russia. Viktor Kevlyuk, military expert of the Center for Defense Strategies, colonel for the armed forces of Ukraine, has told about the advance of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Kursk region and mobilization challenges for Russia. The offensive in the Kursk region is gradually developing mainly in the northern and eastern directions, Kedlyuk said. The Ukrainian defense forces have taken control of the territory with a total area of over 1,000 square kilometers. They have reached certain frontiers. A barrier will be set up from the western direction in case the enemy decides to counterattack from that side. We will advance to the rear and flank of the enemy group that is fighting in the Kharkiv region, he added. Ukraine has established a military commandment's office in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation, headed by Major General Eduard Moskalyov. According to the military expert, this proves that we are a civilized country that is responsible for its international obligations. Ukraine is preparing to bargain with potential U.S. President Donald Trump by seizing Russian lands, the Financial Times reports. Russia brought war to others and now it is returning home. With these words, President Volodymyr Zelensky broke the silence for the first time and indirectly confirmed the invasion of the Ukrainian armed forces into the Russian Kursk region. The Ukrainian president named only one goal of his army's daring offensive, to create a buffer zone in the border region, which the Russians used to strike at the Sumy region. The ambiguity about the strategic objectives of the first invasion of Russian territory since World War II makes sense. It keeps the enemy guessing. Uncertainty is the best way to avoid being cornered if things don't go as planned, says Nikolai Beleskov, a research fellow at the National Institute for Strategic Studies, part of Ukraine's Department of Military Policy. Defense analysts, Ukrainian soldiers and even dictator Vladimir Putin have offered their own explanations for the operation. Withdraw Russian troops from the front, where Ukrainian troops are slowly losing ground. Restore faith in Ukraine's offensive capability. Use Russian territory as a lever of influence in any negotiations with Moscow. Invading Kursk as a bargaining chip in future negotiations is Ukraine's most compelling strategic goal. Putin has voiced it, but it is also the most dangerous. Kiev knows it will be under pressure to negotiate an end to the war, especially if Donald Trump returns to the White House after the presidential election in November. Diplomatically, Ukraine has tried to step up, pushing its own peace formula and promising an international peace conference with an invitation to Russia by November the 5th. Trump has boasted that he will bring peace to Ukraine overnight. No one knows how. But several of his former officials and advisers have suggested that a Trump peace could include territorial concessions in exchange for significant Western security guarantees. Kiev and many of its European allies are concerned that the Trump administration is forcing Ukraine into an unfair and unstable peace under the threat of cutting off U.S. arms supplies. Most Western capitals say they want Kiev to have the strongest bargaining position. But if Kyiv wants to trade the land it seized from Russia, it must hold on to it and the cost could be too high. Ukraine's invasion would need to be supported by a complex logistical operation as well as troop rotations and reserves that were lacking in the east. Ukrainian military officials and Western analysts worry that moving limited resources to Kursk will make it harder for Ukraine to hold its strategically important positions in Donetsk.